Well, in Missouri, there's an old saying: you can take a you can take a boy out of the country, but you can't get the country out of a boy. And I grew up uh, about a half a mile outside the city limits of Independence. Although I was born in Independence, I grew up mostly in the country with cows and ducks and chickens and frogs and snapping turtles and blue herons and whatever. And um, learned to have some respect for the uh, natural life processes. Before the buildings on Eldridge Street were taken down, I was watching uh, uh, mothers sitting in the back window of a, of a tenement building, looking at their children playing in the garbage in the, in the basement pit behind the building, a basement, uh, le basement level pit. And I thought, wow, that's a hell of a way to raise children uh, with no place to, you know, put your feet on the dirt. So over a period of uh, the next five years, I managed to get, get uh, five lots uh, converted from brick rubble into uh, handmade uh, topsoil made from horse, horse manure from Central Park which I call Zentral Park, a slight change of spelling. <laughs> well, I started the garden in 75, and uh, the landlord left in uh, 76, I think, as I remember. I had already started the garden, and uh, I wasn't going to abandon uh, that because I could see other buildings were going to come down, and so it, uh, it was circular, and it would expand, and uh, the circles would bump into buildings and knock the buildings down metaphorically, which, of course, they did. I mean, uh, the buildings fell down. Of course, the city saw what was happening and uh, decided, well, we, we've got to kill this for sure. The soil in the garden was about four inches deep and produced uh, edible corn. It was amazing because uh, corn, you'd think, uh, takes uh, uh, soil a foot or two feet deep. We had cucumbers and uh, cherry tomatoes and uh, asparagus and uh, uh, black raspberries on the wall on Eldridge Street and uh, 45 trees, uh, including eight black walnut trees, uh, half of which were fruiting. and. Uh, it was very productive in terms of, uh, of food. First of all, it was it was uh, destroyed in a two in a two-step operation. The wall on the uh, Eldridge Street frontage and on the south side of the garden took two days with a bulldozer. I mean, uh, it's incorrect to refer to the the destruction of the garden itself with a bulldozer. It wasn't destroyed by a bulldozer. It was in January on January 8th of 1986, a large rubber-tired highway construction vehicle with a scoop in the front ran over the garden for an hour and 15 minutes. If you look at the city maps, there was a, there was a community a so-called community garden across the street, and on the maps for that particular block, it said garden on the map for the, the block I was in, all the area where the Garden of Eden existed, all those, were, it was uh, labeled vacant. It was never officially recognized by the city as existing. Uh, they called it vacant, when in fact there was a work of art there, mm -hmm. an earthwork. So that was, uh, you know, it was a, uh, a work of art that was also ecologically uh, based in terms of a human right to make uh, earth and grow food. I said at the time, and I still feel, that it would have been better to kill me and leave the garden because, uh, um, uh, well, that's the way I view it. When you throw a rock in the water, it, the circles go out, and the circle is uh, historically a, uh, um, a universal symbol. Um, and. Um, you break the circle because you make uh, you make like a labyrinth. You could walk in and out, and it was un it was unlocked. It was truly a community garden from beginning to end.